Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best YouTuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Hopefully you can hear me okay and hopefully there isn't too much background noise. I have two idiot dogs, which <laughs> I'm sure if you're used to my videos already, you'll know this by now. Uh, Pug in particular, who is walking right beside me now. Uh, you'll hear grunting and trying to breathe frantically. Unfortunately, those dogs aren't very good at breathing, but I, I assure you he is still very much alive. Little Bastard scratched me today though, so he's quite lucky to be so. In any way, we're getting off track a little bit here today i want to bring you my dino dolls deck profile uh for those of you who have followed the channel for any amount of time you'll know that i really enjoy dinos it's one of my favorite decks to play because it doesn't really require any skill <laughs> to be quite honest with you um it's a ton of fun you can just blow people out and so for this reason i've decided to do a going second variant there is a really good going first variant out there that i'd recommend you check out if you go check out the disciples uh, I'll put a link in the in the description for you guys. Uh, Marty over there, he's gone ahead and done a going first version, which I think is really, really solid and nice. I just wanted to take a going second approach, um, and so I quite enjoy that. But we'll get stuck into the video. We won't mess around too much more, and we'll show you what we've got and go through some of the choices I've had and, well, why I've chosen them. So we're going to start off the video by going through the dinosaur part of the deck. Um, this isn't too crazy. I've actually cut one or two cards that I would normally play for this. Um, apologies if this looks weird. This is my first time doing it this way around. So hopefully it works out for the best. Let me know if it looks good or not. Uh, anyway, we start off with two copies of Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. I think the two is absolutely fine. There's really no need for a third. It's often just really bricky if that happens. If you're playing a pure dino deck, it's not so bad because you've always got enough targets. But in this kind of deck, we run a few less. So we kind of rely on pill a lot of the time to actually get this out of the deck. Um, so two seems absolutely fine. We really don't want to see it in our opening hand. So that's the number we've gone with. Gone with a single copy of Pancratops. Like I say, this is the going second variant that I wanted to focus on. And Pancratops is one of the best going second cards in the game. It's at one for a reason. Uh, and in Dinos, it's just straight busted. This card deals with so many problematic things. Uh, it's just really, really important. And if nothing else, you can just beat over stuff, uh, trip it off and pop something else. It's really, really good. We're playing three copies of Soul Eaten Over Raptor. This is so incredibly important in this deck. I don't even know where to begin with this. If you were to play Dinos and this wasn't available, well, you basically wouldn't be playing Dinos. It'd be impossible. This card is absolutely busted, whether it's the True King variant, whether it's a Lost World variant, whether it's a Dino Dolls variant, whether it's anything. You need this card at a three of. You need to see it in your opening hand. You want to get to it as quickly as possible. It is your most important normal summon in this deck. We're running three copies of Miscellaneousaurus. Uh, despite my previous list only having two because I did the most Rufio thing in the world and managed to lose a copy, uh, we now have three again. Three is absolutely correct. There's no doubt about it. Uh, it's like a pseudo hand trap, kind of. Uh, it protects all your stuff, but it also is like an extender. It sets up all your combos. Uh, as a worst case scenario, it's a normal summon that can make a rank four. Like, it just does so much. 1800 is actually not too bad, to be fair. Um, not that you want to normal summon it, but crazier things have happened uh, and so it's an important three of in my opinion we're running three copies of baby cerasaurus uh, this has become increasingly important especially within the Madorn arcosaur about uh, this is a really really good way to just get so many free pluses obviously if you've run the true king variant you know how good this card actually is we're not running a copy of petite i don't think it's necessary with only really three targets to you know, worth getting. Uh, so three baby Cerasaurus has worked fine in all testing so far. Uh, it's just there to pop and set up the rest of your plays. And we have just two cards left for our dinosaur engine. Uh, we have one copy of Animador Narcosaur and one copy of Jurak Aeolo. Uh, this is slightly more important in the variants where you're going to use Halka Fibrax. Uh, you know, spoiler alert, we're not running it in this build. I think it's way more important in a going first one. Uh, going second, I, I don't know, I felt like playing it a little bit differently. Whether that's correct or not, that's up to you. Um, one copy of Aeolo, just a great free extender. It sets up all your plays, it gets you into other things. Uh, and a copy of Nimador Narcosaur, just again, it's... It's really important it gets you to pill. Um, you're going to want to summon it a lot of the time from the deck. Uh, it's going to pop a baby. It's just going to get you loads of pluses from there. Really, really important. But again, none, none of these cards you want to open, quite frankly, in your uh, in your opening hand. So uh, one of is pretty much perfect for these. 
And that concludes the dino part of the engine uh, for monsters. We've got some hand traps in here. So we've got three copies of Effect Failure and three copies of Ash, Blossom and Joyous Spring. Uh, I think that these are fairly self-explanatory. I kind of wanted to run a few different uh, cards. I wanted to be able to run the Biru and Impermanence and all of those. The problem is there just isn't enough space. But going second, you do have to have some access to hand traps or you will just lose. You will just lose in this current format. If you can't stop Halka Fibrax or any other combo, you just lose. So you need to have a way to stop them and these are probably the two best options, maybe outside of uh, Nibiru or Infinite Impermanence. That's entirely up to you if you want to run something different. These just felt absolutely correct. I do want to touch quickly, actually, before I move on, about the Dino Engine. I did omit Giant Rex from it, for those of you who may have noticed. I feel like with only one copy of Pill, there's no other real way to take advantage of the Banish. Uh, so you don't often get to summon it again. So in, in case anyone was wondering why that wasn't included, that's why. As for hand traps, this is all really down to personal taste. I think that these are two of your best options. Of course, Impermanence is probably slightly better than Effect Veiler. Um, Nibiru is something that you should probably consider as well. And then we move on to our Shadol cards. Uh, so we've got two copies of Beast, just drawing cards is nice. Uh, we've got triple copies of Squamata because dumping more stuff is nice. Uh, we've got triple copies of uh, Re Shadol Wendy because summoning stuff from deck is super nice. Aerial because Graveyard Control is nice. Uh, Falco, Hedgehog, they do what they do. Uh, and a single copy of Trick Clown. I've put this in here because really... This is what you're using it with. It's just a free extender. It's another free body on board. Uh, when you go into Construct, you just get an extra material out. Uh, it's just pretty nutty. Um, I think that this is a really good number here. There'd be some temptation to maybe put in Dragon instead. Maybe instead of one of these. Um, but at the moment, I don't feel like Dragon is strong enough. There's like The decks that do have back row, um, which really is just Eldritch and Altergeist, don't really care that much if you pop one card. So you're going blind most of the time anyway. Uh, and if you put Eldritch stuff in the grave, you're just doing them a favour really. So I don't think it's strong enough at the moment. Maybe as a sideboard card, but you could definitely choose to play it if you wanted to. I just think this is a nice variety. It gives you enough utility to play around your opponent a little bit. Uh, and it means that you've got enough that you can keep resolving your stuff without hopefully bricking too much on them. And then we move on to our spells and traps. We've got three copies of Shadol Fusion. Uh, it does what it does. This card is absolutely insane. It's amazing when you go second, your opponent just leaves something like extra monster zone. Less of a thing now than it was before. But with everyone playing a Halka Fibrax combo, it's really not as rare as you might expect. To go with it, we've got triple copies of El Shadol Fusion. Uh, this is really, really good when your opponent doesn't have an extra deck monster out on the field. Of course, you can go for this. Being quick play as well, you can do some really niche stuff like being able to fusion summon in the battle phase and just go for more damage. Or, of course, finish your battle and then swap out and go into something, say, like a Winder to lock your opponent out for the following turn. This has got some really nice interaction. You always want to see at least one copy of one of these cards in your opening hands to get your plays going. For our Dino stuff, we have three copies of Fossil Dig and one copy of Double Evolution Pill. Uh, Fossil Dig is pretty self-explanatory. It searches everything you could possibly need. And just one copy of Pill because it can be a brick. You could potentially up this to two, but I don't think there's really enough targets. I think if you're playing a going first build, you could potentially add a second so you can target Coatlas instead and get that out for your first turn in the gate. Uh, but I think in a going second build, it's enough to just get you Conductor. It's easy enough to get to since you've got all of these plus your Over Raptors plus your Animadorn, there's ways to get into cards that can get you to this. And let me round off our spells and traps uh, with one copy of Reshadol uh, Incarnation. Just again, really, really important for the Shadol engine. You should just play with it. You'll see how good it is. Uh, and a copy of Foolish Burial because it's a really good start. It can send Shadols, which obviously sets up all kinds of plays. Uh, it can send Miscellaneous Saurus. It can do just all kinds of good stuff. It just really gets you in a good place. Foolish Burial, absolutely insane card. Uh, both of these just really important as one-offs in my opinion. And that does conclude the main deck. We are not doing a side deck for today's video. Apologies if that was something you were looking for. Again, I just think at the moment, especially with no premier events on, you're kind of looking at what your local meta is. So I don't really want to go too deep dive into some theory on that. We'll go through the extra deck though. Of course, we've got our obligatory tokens. My boy Reese here, who you'll never see in a fantasy, just never turns up. Uh, some more tokens. 
Okay, so we're going to go ahead and look at the Exe monsters first. Uh, so we've got one Lagia, one Dolka. A little bit harder to summon with no giant Rex, but still all the same. I feel they're really necessary to have. Uh, this is probably the more important of the two because it stops Nibiru if you want to go through a whole bunch of plays. And a lot of people are main decking Nibiru at the moment. Lagia just gives you another option if your opponent probably isn't playing something like that, but a little bit more spell and trap heavy. This, of course, just gives you some other options. Now we're going to move on to our fusion, so we're going to look at some of the Shadows naturally. Uh, so we've got one copy of At Cologne, it's just really, really good. Uh, two copies of Winda, I think this is really, really nice. Of course, when you are forced to go first, this is absolutely insane to end on. A lot of the time, decks just can't deal with this. Uh, we've got two copies of Construct because it's absolutely broken. We've got one copy of Grista for something a little bit different. Uh, I flip-flopped a little bit in my head between this and uh, what's the, the water one? Annoy Attilus. Uh, I always like to play one of these other utility ones, sometimes Shekinaga. Um, just another way to dump cards into the grave. This, of course, you can dump Miscellaneosaurus and set up another line of play that way. Its effect isn't too bad. Uh, it's not as good as these, of course, uh, but it's not too bad. And I think we have the space to afford that one kind of uh, gimmicky utility. Something you could definitely substitute out, though, if you decided you wanted to. And then finally, we move on to our links. IP Mascarena, uh, if you saw my remote duels, not the correct line of players to end on just this and pass turn. This does, however, set up a nice interrupt. Again, we are aiming to go second in this deck, but you should absolutely have some contingency plans, and this is a really good contingency plan to have. We have our Fusion Abusers, uh, Predator Plant, Vert Anaconda, and Cross Sheep. Uh, both absolutely broken. Nice to see this is getting a foil print because it's actually quite expensive for a rare. Uh, this card is an absolute sleeper at the moment. I do think that once Halka Fibrax goes, this will be a pretty much obligatory card. Of course, Dragoon will help push this as well. Uh, but both just really, really good cards that can just help extend your plays like beyond all reason. Uh, just both absolutely insane and both really important cards in any Fusion deck in my opinion. We've got a couple of utility cards here, the Nightmares, uh, Phoenix and Unicorn, absolutely sufficient. You could kind of put in Cerberus, but that's entirely up to yourself. Uh, I personally am not too asked about that, to be quite honest with you. Um, Cerberus is okay, but I just think you... A lot of the time, you're going to want to use Cerberus. It's going to help prevent you from going into other lines of play. It sounds kind of convoluted, but when you play, you'll understand. Uh, so I think that these two are absolutely fine as they are. Again, you could throw in some other options as well. IP Masquerader into this is really nice, and this just helps break apart boards. And then we have two Link 4s to finish off. We have one copy of Appaloosa. You can make it. Again, it's usually when you're going first, and of course, you want lines of play that can allow you to do that, and you should probably side deck with that in mind. Um, a Link 4 that just basically stops most decks of course you can make it under the five summons if you're smart enough and then you won't get nabiru so that is something to think about and our final link for is access code talker this in many ways is power crept uh borrow sword which i don't even think borrow sword is necessary in this deck anyway you've got so many other high punching monsters and this is one of them but this also has an additional destruction effect which is just absolutely insane uh this card is is absolutely wild you should absolutely get a copy if you can uh, and that pretty much concludes our numbers for our deck and that is it for the Dino Doll deck profile. Hopefully this has given you some good food for thought on what you can try out. Again, it's not perfect. It's something I've just been playing around with online and has worked quite nicely for me so far. Maybe stuff you disagree with. And as I say, there are variants out there, in particular that the Disciples one that's out there if you want to check that out, if you want to go in first variant that abuses Halka Fibrax, like most decks will. But if you want something to just straight go second and tries to obliterate the opponent in one turn, then this is going to be your baby. Thank you very much for checking in, guys. If you haven't, you should most definitely hit subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, you've enjoyed the garbage content I've put together for you. Enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. Before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in and I'll see you in the next one.